Welcome to the Brave Church Podcast. Our hope is that this message will encourage and inspire you in your walk with Jesus and help you move forward in the life that you're meant to live. The expectations that we bring in, into this place will define the experience that we take out. I'm getting in my, my message. All right, so um, I, we're going to interrupt our regular, regularly uh, scheduled uh, program, and, and we're going to take a break from the series that we started a couple weeks ago called Strange Talk. I'm excited to get back to it next week, but we're going to switch things up uh, today. And I want to go to a passage in the Old Testament, which was, uh, this is the Jewish scripture that we now call the Old Testament. And just a little bit of context about what we're going to read, because I understand we didn't all um, grow up in Bible school, and that's great. This is a church where you don't have to be a theologian to know God and experience God. So just a little bit of context. We're going to read about a character named Joshua, and Joshua in Joshua chapter 4 has just led about 2 million uh, Israelites through the Jordan River. They had been wandering around in what they called the wilderness for 40 years, and now they're stepping foot into the land of Canaan, the land God promised them, but before they could do so, God had to perform a miracle, and he had to, he had to stop the flow in the Jordan River so that they could get through to where they were going to. How many of y'all are going through something? And you need God to make, yeah, we're in one way or another, we need God to make a way. And so that's all you need to know about the scripture. God's just parted the Jordan River, they've walked through, and this is where we're at in Joshua chapter 4, verse 1. It says this, When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan. Where? Where? From, from the middle of the Jordan. You need to go back and take some stones from the middle of the Jordan, right from where the priests are standing. What had happened was, is uh, God had them, the, the priests that were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, which again, if you don't know what this means, it's totally cool. The Ark of the Covenant is symbolic for the presence of God. That's all you need to know. The priests walked the Ark of the Covenant and they stepped into the Jordan River before God even started to part the waters. There are some things in lives that we have to step into before we know how God's going to make a way. There's some things that we have to be willing to step into before we even start to see the water subside. And so the priest walked in with the Ark of the Covenant, and he's saying, go get some stones from where they're still standing and carry them over to where you're going to stay tonight. Verse 4. After they had done so, Joshua, um, go ahead. Uh, he says, in the future when your children ask you, uh, actually, I think we skipped a couple of verses. Give me four. There we are. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe. In verse 5, he said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. He's good at taking notes from God. He's good at listening and doing. This is good, Joshua. And uh, go on, each of you is to take up a stone on your shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you. Here's a big text coming up, um, verses 6 and 7. And in the future, when your children, give me my, it's 6 and 7, 6 and in the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When across the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Before you're seated, I'd love for you to be brave enough to uh, tell them our sermon title. And I need you to say it with boldness and audacity. I need you to find five people, high five them before you're seated and tell them, get out of it. High five five people before you're seated and tell them to get out of it. Thank you so much, worship team. Can we thank our worship team? Can we thank all of the home teams, the media team, the parking lot team, uh, Brave Kids, volunteers? Thank you so much for all those of you who make this moment possible. Thank you, worship team. We'll see you here uh, in a, in a little, little bit. Um, talking about getting out of it. Let's start out with a question. Have you ever noticed how two people can go through the exact same situation and come out of it with two completely different experiences. Jackie and I have some friends uh, who got married just uh, about a year and a half ago, but, but prior to them um, marrying, they, they dated. 
And so they would go on dates, and because I was really good friends with the dude, um, he would tell me how the date went afterwards. Um, and because Jackie was good friends with the girl, the woman, um, she would tell Jackie how the date went. And then Jackie and I would get together, and we would just have so much fun comparing how they experienced the exact same date. I was, was going to ask if you've ever been on a, a date and found out that there were divergent experiences, but I didn't want to get, you know, that might be a sore subject. I know that I have. I thought she liked me. Guess not. Okay. Um, one other area in my life that I see this phenomenon showing up is uh, through one of the aspects of our follow-up process here at, at Brave Church. So one of the um, aspects of our follow-up here is that if you were to fill out one of the, the Connect cards, the Connect with this card, which I'll talk about later, um, you'll get an email from our team, and it thanks you for, for coming here. Thanks you for being courageous enough to check out a new church. But then in that email, it also has a link that will send you to a feedback form where you can provide feedback about your experience, and it's very helpful to us. We're a young church still trying to figure things out, and so it's great to hear how you experience it. And it's been also fun to hear about how differently people can experience the exact same Sunday morning. Because I've read, I've read, yes, I've read some feedback forms that encouraged me, lifted my soul. Then there's been others that uh, uh, I found out they did not have the same experience. Uh, you know, because I'll read a feedback form, you know, about, um, you know, someone might say, I just loved the passion of the preacher. And I'll go, oh, thank God. And then the very same Sunday, I'll get another feedback form that says he was a little bit too dramatic and he yelled too much. Oh, all right. Okie dokie. And I think that's why I respect our worship team um, so much when they get up here because every single Sunday when they lead worship, they, they're, they're going to experience some of that where on any given Sunday, there's going to be someone here that as they're leading, um, they're going to walk out of Brave Church with an experience with God. And it's going to be just what they needed. And yet at the very same time, there's going to be another person that's going to walk out of here wishing that they could have gotten that 15 to 20 minutes back. You know, because, the, you know, whether it was the, the, you know, the song selection was all songs after the year 2000 or, you know, what, what it might be. Um, you know, on one hand, there's going to be someone who's going to walk out of Brave Church with a bigger perspective of who God is. There's going to be another person that's going to walk out with a perspective that was, you know, trying to figure out whether a, a keyboard synthesizer should be used in the house of God. And on one hand, there's going to be a person that's going to walk out of here and they're going to be so blessed by that fourth song, uh, um, King of My Heart, I think it was. And they're going to listen to it on repeat because they're going to be singing, you are good, you are good, all over the bad things in their life. And they're going to be listening to it on repeat. There's going to be another person that's going to walk from here and, and they're, you know, going to spend the whole week trying to figure out what the 21st century equivalent to David's harp and his lyre is, and they're going to find that it was not a keyboard synthesizer. I guess what I'm trying to say, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that, you know, it's completely possible for two people to go through the exact same thing and come out with two vastly different experiences because our experiences are not so much shaped by what we go through, but by what we take from them. I guess I'll say it this way. I've, I'm finding more and more that our experiences in life have less to do with what we experience and more to do with what we get out of it. Here in Joshua chapter 4, and just a forewarning, I am going to be brief today, y'all. Like, it's Father's Day. Historically, fathers are all about um, the shorter messages. At least my dad is. The, the message that I felt worst about, he thought it was the best. I looked at all the other messages. It was the shortest message I ever preached. <laughs> He's not here right now, so I can say that. So with that said, um, as we dive into this, uh, I would love for you to pack all of the engagement that you would typically give me for 40 minutes and pack it all into 20 minutes. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. So in Joshua chapter 4, Israel has just gotten out of the wilderness where they've been wandering around for 40 years. And they have simultaneously just stepped into the promised land, the land of Canaan that God promised to them 40 years earlier. And yet, the reason why we're really reading about this portion of scripture today and what makes it so um, inspirational and, and remarkable is not where they came from and it's not where they went to but it's the Jordan River the impassable and unbridgeable Jordan River that they had to go through in order to get to where they were going to 
um, kind of a foolish question, but how many of y'all know that in order to get from where you're at to where you are going to, there is always something you have to go through. And I know that's not the most, you know, the deepest theological thought that you were hoping to devour this morning. Uh, and I kind of laughed about it as I jotted it down this last week because it, it does seem pretty commonsensical. Like, duh, of course, you know, in order to get from point A to point C, you have to go through point B. And, and if you are hoping to become physically fit, you are going to have to go through the weight room. And, and unless your name is Benjamin Button, in order to become an adult, you have to go through adolescence. And in order to get your license, your driver's license, you've got to go through the driver's exam. In order to get your medical license, you've got to go through the board's exam. You've always got to go through something to get to where you are going to. And yet, I think if you were to do an audit of, let's just talk about myself for a second. If you were to do an audit of the expectations that I place on God a lot of times, you would find that I have a deeply rooted belief in teleportation. Because I would like to pass on whatever process God wants to take me through, and I would just like to poof, get to the destination. And that's how I expect God to work in my life. So I, I expect and I would like to experience God's peace without having to go through the process of surrender. I would, I would much rather experience God's joy without having to go through the process of trusting in him. I'd really love to experience God's power in my life without having to operate and walk through God's purpose for my life. And yet time and time and again, I am reminded that God's nickname is not Scotty. That's a Star Trek reference. I didn't grow up watching Star Trek, so I'm just trying to reach an older demographic. Um, and I am not Captain Kirk. Another Star Trek reference. And God does not beam us up from point A to point C without first taking us through point B. And here's why. There's a point to point B, and it's this. is that God not only knows where you're at, and he not only sees where you're going, but he also knows who you need to become in the process before you get there. And so God will take us through some things in order to change us and to, to mold us so that we are ready for where we're going. Somebody say, get out of it. Get out of it. Watch this. So, so, so God leads Israel through the Jordan River. And their very next stop after the Jordan River would be the walls of Jericho. Where they would come face to face with the unscalable and seemingly indestructible walls of Jericho. Where God would have them walk around the walls for, for six days. And then on the seventh day, he miraculously brought down the walls of Jericho. Somebody say faith. Faith. That takes a lot of faith. That's a bit, that's a, that's a, you know, level three faith right there. When you have the faith to walk around and, and circle some things, I read Circle Maker by Mark Batterson a couple weeks ago. You, when you've got the faith to, to pray around some things and keep moving around some things in your life, even though you don't know whether God's going to come through on the other end, that takes a lot of faith. To, to do what God had them do. So keep that in mind. When God had them go through the Jordan River, he didn't just pick any time of the year to take them through it. You are not just going through something at a random point in time, but rather God has thought long and hard about what you're going through. God didn't lead them through the Jordan River just at any time, but rather he led them through the Jordan River at flood stage. The one time of the year that the, the Jordan River went from becoming a lazy river and it was more like the white water rapids. He took them through the Jordan River. He parted away uh, through the Jordan River the one time out of the year that they could not traverse it themselves. He took them through the Jordan River at the one time of the year that they could not make it through on their own. He took them through the Jordan River the one time of the year that they were going to need God to show up in a powerful way and get them through it. Did you ever stop to think that the faith that you're going to need for where you're going to is the same faith that you're getting out of what you're going through? Somebody say, get out of it. Say it again. Get out of it. Get out of it. There's a faith that you've got to get out of what you're fighting through right now. Because God not only sees what you're fighting through right now, but he knows that fight that's waiting for you on the other side. Oh, 
oh, that, that jarred some of y'all paradigms of how God works, that there's another fight. That's the thing about walking in faith with God. That's the thing about living the life that we're meant to live. Every single battle begets another battle. Every single battle that we're in, there's another waiting for you on the other side. And so God in his good grace is developing the faith that you need in the fight that you're in right now for the fight that's waiting for you on the other side. There's some strength that you've got to get out of this season that you're struggling with some things because you are. There's some strength that you've got to get out of it because it's that strength that God is developing in you so that you can bear under the weight of what you're calling success. We get this all mixed up. You know, whatever you want to call success in your life, there's a lot of different definitions. We all think that if we could just get through the struggle to success, that we'd be fine. But success weighs just as much as the struggle does. As a single person, I always thought that my biggest struggle was being single. And then I got married. There was a struggle waiting for me on the other side. And it wasn't Jackie. It was not Jackie. Let me just clear that up, Jackie. If you're watching the podcast, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about how when I got married, I found out that it exposed a lot of things that I had to struggle with while we were in Mary, and I had to deal with a lot of things that I didn't necessarily have to deal with when I was single. And, you know, we all think that, that things are going to get so much easier if we could just get the breakthrough in our career. And you've been praying for more influence in your life. And I'm just, I'm, I, I'm struggling right now because we think that the biggest struggle is the delay and the waiting. But the thing about it is, is that when God does give you the influence, that means there's more people that you're influencing and people have a way of presenting more problems and so God God is allowing you to struggle in this and he's stretching you in this because he's stretching the much needed strength that you're going to need for the next season that he's walking you into there, there, there's some identity that you've got to get out of this season of loneliness because you've got to figure out and find who you are in him before you're known by someone else somebody say get out of it get out of it Get out of it. There is always something. Always. Everyone say always. There is always something that we've got to get out of what we're going through. And yet too many times, I think that in our anxiousness and our impatience to get out of what we're going through, we fail to get out of what we need to get out of what we're going through. Because we're so hasty, you can imagine how anxious Israel was for 40 years dreaming about the moment that they would step into the promised land. You can imagine how badly they want to just jump right through, but oftentimes in our anxiousness to get out of what we're going through, we, we miss out on what we really needed to get out of what we were going through. Are you tracking with me? I know that it was a lot of play on words there. And so God, in his good grace will slow us down. Just like he did in Joshua chapter 4, God will prolong the transition sometimes. Not because he's bad, but because he's good. Not because he doesn't care about you, but because he's rather very concerned about you. And he will slow the process down, which is why we see in Joshua chapter 4 that as Israel has just taken their first steps into the promised land, the very first thing that God says is, you're going to need to go back. They just took their first steps, and it must have felt so good to finally find home. It must have felt so good to get to where they were going to. And yet as soon as they got through, it said as soon as all of them went through, God says to Joshua and says, now you've got to send 12 people back in, and you've got to go back into what you just came through. And I want you to gather 12 stones from the riverbed. 12 stones from the Jordan riverbed that would serve as a constant reminder of how God got them through. 12 stones that they would gather from the riverbed that would help them to never forget how God showed up. 12 stones for when they'd get to Jericho and they'd go out from Gilgal, which was their home base, after they walked into the, the promised land, they'd go to Jericho, they'd walk around it, nothing would happen, and they'd come back to Gilgal, where the stones were at. They'd go out day two, and they'd walk around it, nothing would happen, they'd come back to Gilgal, where the stones were. And those stones would remind them, yeah, it doesn't look like God's working, but God is always up to something. I love this about the way that God parted the Jordan River. He did it out of their, 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 their uh, 
out of the, the boundaries of their vision. He did it out of sight. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. God is, God is never out of sight and not working. But rather, God parted the Jordan River 30 miles upstream where they did not see where God parted. All they saw was the results of God's faithfulness. And so they knew, God knew when you get to the Jordan, the Jericho walls, and not a single stone has fallen after six days, you're going to need every night to be reminded of those stones when you didn't know how I parted the water, but I made a way when you were unaware of it. Twelve stones so that they would never forget how God showed up and how he worked in their lives. Commands them to go back into what they've just walked out of. And I'm wondering, what are the stones that you need to take from what you just went through? What are are the stones that you need to gather up and get out of what you stepped out up from? A lot of times in my own life, and maybe you've never been there, but I have, where you find yourself in a cycle of, of struggles where you're just constantly repeating the same pattern of pain and of heartache and constantly going through the same mistakes and the same failures. I'm not about to talk about you, but I will talk about myself. I found that 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 cycle usually gets started when I refuse to pause and look back at what I just came out of and learn and take some stones from it so that I could go into the next one with a different perspective. What are those stones? To those of you who just came out of something, it it might do you some good to look back and and mentally rehearse the things that happened because there's some things in there that you need to find. There's some stones there that you need to gather and you need to take up with you as you walked out of it. Those of you who, who are going through something right now, keep your eyes peeled because there are certain things that you will only see from inside the struggle. There are certain aspects of God that you will only ever experience when you're going through the hardship. I remember when I had gone through such a tough time for about a year, um, I went through what my counselor said was a severe episode of depression. But I'll never forget that when when I met with my counselor, I called one of my mentors back in Oklahoma City and I told him what the deal was. And I said, this is what I'm struggling with. And and, and it's, you know, my counselor said it could last up to, you know, six to nine months where I was hoping he was going to say six to nine hours. And and, and so, you know, and I, I began to just get overwhelmed, stressed out. And I'll never forget when my buddy Oscar Ortiz said over the phone, he said, it's going to be hard and it's going to be tough, but you make sure you get everything out of this season. You make sure you journal every single day and you write down everything that you're experiencing because there are certain things that, about God that you can only see from inside the struggle. What is it that you need to get out of what you went through? And here's my last question today. What if... It's not just for you. Joshua in verse 21, 421, after they had taken the stones and set them up at Gilgal, he says this, he says, in the future your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Verse 23, For the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes and he kept it dry until you were all across just as he did at the Red Sea when he dried it up until we had all crossed over. Verse 24, he says this, he did this, God did this so that all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful and so that you might fear the Lord your God forever. A little bit of context, what's sad is that Many years after Joshua had led Israel into the land of Canaan, after Joshua had experienced countless victories, and really after Joshua had lived a life that honored God, at the end of his life, when Joshua passed away, we read one of the saddest verses, I think, in in the entire Bible, where in Judges chapter 2, it says that after Joshua died and his generation died, Judges chapter 2, 10, it says, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Come to find out that Joshua got the stones out of the riverbed. He set them up at Gilgal. They went through and they conquered Jericho. They went through and conquered Ai. They went through and had countless victories. But after they had gotten to where they were going to, turns out that they forgot to come back and remember what they had to get through. 
It turns out that they had forgot to, to take their kids on a little road trip back to Gilgal because there's some things you need to learn about what God has brought us through. It turns out that they forgot to talk to the next generation about all that God had been faithful to them in the past. Gilgal, I learned this last week in the Hebrew language, means circle. And it made me wonder, what are the experiences, the situations of your life that you need to circle back to and you need to share with someone else so that they can gain a greater context about what they're going through? makes me wonder what are the moments in your life what are the moments in my life that we are more prone to cover up and try to forget all about what if those are the exact same moments that are going to provide the key to someone else conquering their moments what what if, what if it's those moments what if it's the moments what if it's the moments in your past where you gave god thanks for getting you through but then you tried to forget about it as soon as you got out of and what if what if it's that moment that god wants you to circle back to what if it's that moment god wants you to share dads in the house it's fathers day happy fathers day Dads, we love that y'all are trying to provide and provide the way for us. Y'all y'all are, are, are fighting and you're trying to make a way. Love that. We love that you're leading by example. You're being strong one more week. But what if the most powerful thing that you can leave your children is the story of how God drastically changed your life? What, what, if, what if the greatest thing you can give your kids is not... Um, a good work ethic and that you taught them how to make their own way but what if it's about when you tell them how God made a way when there was no way what if the greatest thing you can give your children is not not showing them that you can be strong in times of great distress but where you open and say there was a time that I was weak there was a time that I didn't know what to do but God got me through what is it that you need to get out of what you're going through and what if it's not just for you will you pray with me god thank you so much for this moment god thank you again for your unyielding patience for us god god we thank you that you are the god um, you're the god of paul who said that we now boast in our weaknesses for when it's in our weakness that your strength is manifested. So God, in this moment, we just wanna circle back to some things that we remember that it was not us, that we were there, we were present, we, we, we tried to move forward, we tried to stay faithful, but if we were honest, we weren't really sure if you were gonna show up and yet you still did. Thank you that you're the God that you want us to circle back to that time and time again. God, I pray right now that you would open up opportunities for us this week to circle back to some stuff that we've tried to forget, we've tried to overlook, we've tried to bury, that you'd show us those things that we need to circle back to. And then the next part, God, I pray that you would point out the people that need to hear it because there's someone in our lives, God, that needs to hear not about how we've been strong and how faithful we've been, but, but we, we need to tell people about how we broke. We don't just want to say where we came from and where we're at now, but this is what we went through. This is what God got us through. That's our desire. God, we pray this in your mighty name. And if you agree with that, would you say amen and give God a big round of applause right now? Amen. If you enjoy listening to the Brave Church Podcast and think others could too, please rate us wherever you're listening and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. If you'd like to support Brave Church financially, you can do that by going to bravechurch.tv give.